Hi fellow researchers, Jason here again, and today's video is regarding the chi-square test for independence. And you'll remember from your classes, this is a non-parametric test to evaluate the relationship between two categorical variables. Okay, and so uh, the question for this example today is, is there a relationship between gender and interest in buying a 3D food printer? Or in other words, is there a difference between uh, males and females with regards to interest in buying a 3D food printer. Okay, so we have two variables. One is gender and one is purchase intent or interest in buying. Okay, and our null hypothesis is that there is no relationship and our alternative hypothesis is that there is a relationship or there is a difference between males and females with regards to interest in buying a 3D food printer. Now, you go out in the world, right, and you ask people these two simple questions. One, what is your gender? All right, we get males and we get females. And then you ask them, would you buy a 3D food printer? You have yes and you have no. Okay, and, and, and here's our, our hypothetical data. Okay, and you can see here we have 20 males and we have 20 females. Okay, so you're a good researcher and, and, and you try and get an equal number of males and females. It's not necessary. It's not necessary, but the numbers are cleaner when you do. Okay, and you can see here that um, there's probably a difference between males and females because, well, 16 of our 20 males said that yes to the question, would you buy a 3D food printer? And four of our males said no. Whereas we had eight females that said yes to the question, would you buy a 3D food printer? But 12 females said no. No. So, you know, in, in this, just looking at the data, right, you can say, oh, it looks like males are more interested in buying a 3D food printer than females. But as a good researcher, right, you have to uh, uh, do a test or do some kind of statistical analyses to determine if, uh, if the population of males and females uh, differs, right? Because we have a sample here, and our sample is 40 individuals. Whoopsie daisies. Let me just uh, choose this one here. Okay. We have a sample of 40 individuals, right? And that's a small sample in, in relation to the entire, you know, or population of males and females, so that's why we have to do a, a test to see, um, you know, how 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 uh, how I guess generalizable uh, are these results. So um, we have our observed table, right? This is what we saw, and then you're going to have your expected table, okay? And these are called cross tabs, in case you uh, uh, wanted to know. Um, when we're gonna, so you have to do an expected table, right? And the formula for that is. Uh, frequency expected equals um, the, 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 the total for the column multiplied by the total for the row divided by the total uh, sample size or, or n. Uh, this should be a big n. Um, anyways, basically what you're going to do is you're going to uh, say 24 multiplied by 20 divided by 40 okay, to get uh, the value that you're going to put uh, right in here and it's going to be 12. Okay, 12 12, 8, and 8. So you do that for each cell, right? And it's kind of obvious, right? Look, you have 24 people that said yes to would you buy a 3D food printer, all right? And if there's no relationship between males and females, then you would expect half of these people to be males and half of these people to be females, right? So you'd expect 12 males to say yes and 12 females to say yes. Similarly, 16 people said no in total. Right? So you would expect if there was no relationship between gen, uh, males and females or if there was no difference between males and females, you would expect that there would be eight males that said no and eight females that said yes. That's what you would expect if there was no relationship. Right? So that's what we have to do um, for our pen and paper chi-square uh, method. Let me just bring up the calculations here. Right? You know our formula for chi-square is the frequency observed minus the frequency expected squared over the frequency expected. And you're going to have, in this case, four uh, separate uh, uh, values here that you're going to add up in the end. And you're going to get a value of 6.667. It actually goes on and on. Um, now, remember, right, we have a sample size of 40. Our degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1, okay, which comes out to being just 1. And if we choose an alpha level of 0 0.05, our critical chi-square is 3.84. So clearly that's significant, right? That's, that's pretty significant. Um, and so you say, Jason, look, we've figured this out. We've done it in pen and paper. We know there is a relationship between males and females with regards to interest in buying a 3D food printer, 
right? But what if you had thousands of, of people in your sample? This would get pretty messy, and that's why we have SPSS. Okay, and so here I have the exact same data, right? One variable is sex, and we have males and females. The other variable is purchase intent, and we have yes and no. If I go to my data view, you can see here I have 40 individuals, okay? 20 males and 20 females, right? Uh, uh, we have 16 males that say yes, four males that say no, and then we have, uh, let's see here, what do we got 12 females that say no, and, and we have eight, eight females that say yes, right? Exactly the same as what, we, um, as what we had here. Okay, so this is so simple. I'm just going to analyze descriptive statistics and then cross tabs. Okay, analyze descriptive and cross tabs. And um, you have rows and you have columns. So if I were to just copy how we had it here, we have our, our purchase intent in the columns and we have our gender in the rows. So let's just do that sex. Uh, let's put that in the rows and purchase intent. We'll put that in the columns. Now if I want to get my chi-square value, okay, I'll show you again. Just click on statistics, click on chi-square, and then you're probably going to want to do a measure of effect size. So rather than just looking at the significance, you want to see to, you know, to what, what's the strength or to what degree um, um, it, does this relationship exist. So in this case, we're going to be doing phi because we have a two by two table. Kramer's V is if you have anything greater than a two by two table. I'll show you that later on in terms of how to calculate it anyway. Um, click on continue. Okay. And then um, uh, I want to see, click on cells and then I want to see the expected uh, values as well. And that's basically just this table right here, expected. Okay, so I click on expected, and I'm going to hit continue, and I'm going to hit OK, and our output's going to pop up right here. We got 40 cases. All right, and you can see here males, right, and female uh, males and females are here. And would you buy a 3D food printer? It's up here. It's exactly the same as the tables we have here, except that they've been basically uh, combined into one table. Right. So for expected count, 12 and 8 for expected count 12 and 8 all right and then for the the observed counts 16 and 4 for the observed counts here we have 8 and 12 okay so it's exactly the same as this right 16 4 8 and 12 12 and 8 12 and 8 they've just been um, put on top of each other and down here we have my Pearson chi-square value of 6.667 that's exactly what we calculated all right and it gives us our, our significance of 0 0.01 so it's very significant, right? That's less than 0 0.05. And that was our, our cutoff value for significance. And down here, you can see our measure of effect size. In this case, we're doing phi uh, because we have a two by two table and the value is 0 0.408. So it's, it, it's significant, right? It's very significant and it has about a medium to strong effect size. So there's a, a medium to strong relationship uh, between gender and purchase intent for 3D food printers. Um, I'll just show you quickly here the calculation for uh, phi. This is phi, right? And it's going to be the root of your chi-square value divided by the sample size, which is 6.67 divided by 40 to the power of 0.5. That's our root. And it comes out to being 0.4. All right. And if you're going to do Kramer's V, there's just a small addition. It's this, it's this right here. It's DF with an asterisk. Um, is going to be multiplied by n in your uh, denominator and df is just the smaller of r minus 1 or c minus 1 all right so if you have a table that's 3 by 3 um, then then this value will become 1 right and uh, or, or 2 okay, in other words and so you're going to have a different uh, effect size value but in this case because we have a 2 by 2 table this is basically just 1 and that's why we have 0.4 um, for Kramer's V and also 0.4 for phi. Okay, if I look back here, right, we got the same values for phi and Kramer's V. Um, so that's a very quick video on uh, chi square. And if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. If not, stay tuned for my next video in this video series. Cheers.